All right, so here's how it's gonna be. When he moves to the extra monster zone, you'll shift to the main monster zone so you can attack him for lethal! Oh, who am I kidding? These appliances are never going to win a YCS. At least, not without a rock! <laughs> Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I need to probably rethink the decisions my Patreon subscribers can make for me. For those of you unaware, my patrons at the Summon Reactor SK level recommend an archetype for a 10 minute testing monthly, and the class at large votes on which they want to see. And for some reason I can't fathom, the winner demanded I play Zero Xerox Exodia. Now I'm not going to do that, but I will try the card out in a shell that's currently lacking playables, and it'll be a good excuse to get Appliancer out of TMT Hell as well. Presenting Appliancer Zero Xerox. But first, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll finally shut down my Patreon, insulating myself from your terrible ideas forever. So here's the list, and yeah, we're playing Dragoon and Rusty, what did you expect? As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's z zip into Zero Xerox Appliancer. There's two halves to this hole, so we'll look at the worst first. Appliancer is an archetype that looked absolutely bonkers in the anime, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Soulburner's Salaman Greats. Unfortunately, in practice, it's missing... Uh, pretty much everything that would make it relevant. It's got a powerful starter and link spam tool in Socket Troll, and said monster fulfills the conditions on machine duplication, which is always a plus, but none of the in-archetype payoffs to this strategy do much against anything in the metagame. Relying on generic extra deck monsters like Rusty, Verte, and the Codebreakers would be good enough, except that their only down arrow monster, Keltipus, is almost impossible to protect for more than one turn. That is, without Zero Xerox, of course. With the inclusion of this, the most powerful floodgate ever printed, our Keltipus can survive an entire turn, provided our opponent doesn't have spell and trap removal. But really, what's the likelihood of that? From there, we can spend our additional link material in service of the true masters of the extra deck, Rusty Bardish, which should be rebanned, Verte Anaconda, which will be banned, and Virus Berserker, which is generally okay if not unintended. Ideally, we should be able to end on the exact same board every non-meta deck is making right now, with the added addition of Zero Xerox, I suppose. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Appliancers. Three Socket Troll, three Breaker Buncle, and three Copy Buckle. Next, our Extender, three Exceed, followed by three Ash, DM and Red Eyes, Zero Day, and Boots. For Spells and Traps, we have Zero Xerox, baby! Three Electro Lyrical World, three Reuse, three Dupe, one Red Eyes Fusion, one One for One, one Upstart Goblin, one Terraforming, three Infip, and two Fogblade. In the extra, we've got Goon, Access Code, Unicorn, Berserker, Rusty, Virus, Mask, Verte Anaconda, Keltipus, two Laundry Dragon, Vacu Elephant, Dryer Drake, Kappa Scale, and Link Aribo. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Generator. I get a lot of hate on this platform when I, correctly by the way, claim that Generator is rogue tier at best, so let's see how it deals with tier 0 super threat Appliancer 0 Xerox. Our opponent's going first, they're going to normal summon a copy of Lopter, then activate its effect to summon a copy of Mardell from deck. They will add a Generator stage to hand before activating it, setting one of the Solemns, and passing turn. They have a boss room set, and they will activate it as we activate the ash we ripped off the top. It's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, that will be negated, and they'll be able to summon both a bunch of tokens and a Lopter to their side of the field. We'll go ahead and activate Electro Lyrical World. They will chain Lopter, no doubt salivating at the opportunity to activate Har's second effect. They will do so, and we will send this Breaker Buncle to the graveyard before normal summoning a copy of Socket Troll and specialing a copy buckle. We'll activate Socket Troll, they'll activate Har, and thankfully our monster isn't destroyed. We'll activate Machine Duplication, and thankfully that resolves. We'll get a couple of Socket Trolls before making a Keltipus. They will Solemn Judgment, but we still should be fine. We'll activate Reuse, they'll activate Boss Fight. This is going to trigger Boss Stage again and allow them to go into, unfortunately for us, a copy of Atgarda. We'll go into a Link Aribo, triggering the Parallel Exceed we drew. Afterwards, we're going to trigger the Parallel Exceed effect on field and go into a copy of Mascarena. We'll make Unicorn, targeting this copy of Garda, they'll activate Edgarda's effect, putting back Electro Lyrical World as we go into Access Code Talker. We'll go ahead and clean up, I guess, the boss room, it doesn't really matter, because from here we're going into Verte Anaconda, sending Red Eyes Fusion, and going into Dragoon. We're going to pop our opponent's monsters and deal lethal burn damage to them. 
Our second match is up against Phantom Knight Burning Abyss, and boy do I not envy my opponent. Imagine loading into a game with a 2016 deck and having to face down the format super threat, Zero Xerox. Behold its power. We'll leave with a copy of Soccer Troll and one for one for a Soccer Troll. That's going to summon a Soccer Troll from deck. Afterwards, we're going to link summon a copy of Kappa Scale so we can bring back this copy of Breaker Buncle from the graveyard and make Keltopus, Laundry Dragon, and Zero Xerox pass. Beat that. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Psychic Wielder, followed by a Chusinoko. They hit the Chusinoko, American Sniper everyone, before going into Cherubini. They'll activate Cherubini's effect, sending a Graph, now at 2 by the way, before going into a Rubik. From here, they can make a Crystron Halcafibrax, and summon from deck a copy of Brass Bombard. That's going to turn into a Link Cross, and that Brass Bombard is a level 1 tuner, so afterwards they're going to be able to Synchro Summon a Formula Synchron, draw a card, and then make Martial Metal Marcher. That'll bring back this copy of Rubik. Afterwards, they're going to go into a Barricade Borg Blocker and a Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Let's go to set a copy of Ooh, Shade Brigandine sending a Tear Scale and Special Summon a Silent Boots and a Psychic Wielder. They'll activate the effect of Silent Boots before activating the Graveyard Effect of Tear Scale to summon itself and make a Union Carrier. Finally, they're going to activate the effect of Verte Anaconda to make a Dragoon, and then the effect of Union Carrier to lock me out of the extra deck. They'll activate Dragoon, targeting Laundry Dragon, we'll protect, they'll do it again, we'll take 15, and FOOL! You've locked yourself from the battle phase! From here we can easily win! We'll activate a second Zero Xerox, what chance have you against two and... Oh. Yeah, um... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh... So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Infernoble Knight, and whoo, our hand is good. With one notable exception. Ladies and gentlemen, we have failed to find Zero Xerox. Might as well concede now, but somehow we'll have to persevere. We're going to lead with a copy of Copy Buckle. We'll go into a Link Rebo and activate the effect of the Parallel Exceed in hand. Then we'll activate the effect of the Parallel Exceed on field and be met with the Cyframe Gear Gamma. Okay, no big deal. I don't think that Dragoon's Negation is more powerful than the traps we have, but I do want to make it regardless. It's not threatened right now, and I'm greedy. We'll send this copy of Driver to the graveyard, followed by the Gamma. I know it's a bad idea to put Driver into the grave, but 3,500 burn damage. Our opponent's going to lead with an Olivier and a Durandal in the WRONG COLUMN, FOOL! That'll negate the effect of the Durandal and force them to go to battle phase, walking over the Verte and passing. For turn, we draw fodder for the Dragoon. We're going to activate its effect, popping our opponent's copy of Olivier. They'll take a thousand, they'll activate the effect of Durandal, I see my window to lethal, and unfortunately it's immediately obscured by a Cyframe gear. Oh, gentle hubris, had I not sent the driver to the graveyard. Well, we'll do it again. We're going to go to the battle phase and walk over one of their monsters before allowing this Gamma to banish itself. For turn, they draw... Ooh, a copy of Living Fossil. Wait, they're going to DDR back the Gamma, then Living Fossil back the Olivier. That enables a Link Summon of Halka Fibrax, which immediately meets Fogblade. I'm feeling pretty good about this. From here, they're going to turn that Halka Fibrax into a Link Cross and activate its effect for two tokens, but the Link Cross itself is in attack position, so we should be able to walk over it. For turn, we draw a Copy Bockle, proceed to battle, and deal lethal. So, it's time for game two, and wow, another mediocre hand from our opponent, and fantastic one from us. They're going to lead with a copy of Aqua Dolphin, and ha! <laughs> <laughs> no monsters to speak of. They'll go into an Ice Old. We'll activate Infinite Impermanence here. I know it's a little premature, but I feel with the contents of the hand, it's probably fine. They'll go into a copy of Durandal and activate its effect for an Olivier. They could make another Ice Old here, but in the face of another Infip, it's probably not wise. They'll instead go into Link Cross. I figure I want to stop the Martial Metal Marcher, and as soon as they make a Halcafibrax, I realize my mistake. As long as they're playing 001, which they are, they can from here go into Auroradon, make three tokens, and get the 001 from the graveyard. Ugh, fine. Afterwards, they're going to Synchro Summon a copy of Power Tool, and really, my only hope here is that they fail to get the Living Fossil and instead get the DDR! Oh my god, they need a card to use it! So instead, they're going to have to use Aurorodon to get out this Colt Wing and pass without another Mecha Phantom Beast. Well, we should be able to OTK from here. We'll activate one for one, setting the Sock Control that we got at the Electro Lyrical World for a Copy Bockle. We'll activate Machine Duplication for a bunch of Copy Bockles, and then they'll activate 001 in Graveyard. Hilarious! We'll go into a Keltopus that triggers Electro Lyrical World and gives us back this copy of Sock Control, which we can then Special Summon. We'll go to Virus Swordsman and summon at Link Point Zero Day, followed by a Virus Berserker, summoning at Link Point both the Zero Day and the Virus Swordsman. Those are going to turn into a Rusty Bardish, which is going to set a copy of Blade and get a copy of Boots into the Graveyard. We'll add another Blade and go into an Access Code Talker. This is going to destroy the defense position monster. Unfortunately, all these cards are dark. We'll use Reuse to bring back this copy of Copy Bockle so we can make Verte Anaconda and bring out Dragoon for the nth time. Why does this card burn, by the way? It boggles the mind. We'll send our opponent's entire field to the graveyard, doing a million damage in the process, and then proceed to battle, getting in for lethal. So we're back with the deck, and god, I hope this satisfies my court-ordered 0 Xerox build. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, 
Appliancer accomplishes something. It's frustrating that their extra deck cards are so weak because they are quite good at spamming the amount of material necessary for ED bosses. Two, Zero Xerox actually accomplishes something in the deck too. Uh, granted, it's not enough, but it isn't the worst thing in the world in terms of keeping Keltipus alive. And three, just like scumming wins with mine off of kids who forget to board Cosmic is life's sweetest pleasure, scumming wins with Zero Xerox under the same conditions, <laughs> it's great. And the cons. One, Appliancer's not doing anything interesting here. It's just assembling the same setup that any rogue deck can accomplish. Two, when forced to stand on its own merits, Appliancer is laughably bad. I don't know what deck they thought Laundry Dragon was going to be capable of taking out on its own, but I'd like to see it. And three, Zero Xerox is terrible. All in all, I hope today proved that my supporters are monsters and that you shouldn't take Appliancer seriously. Bye! So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, Alex Perea, Candyman, Koiboat275, Crispy, DimSum05, Innercrest, King Magic Ruler, Lavender Lemonade, Meteor Mirage, Mike Carlotti, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy1993, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums the Fourth. Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amid Elefandi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Rethi, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Candide, Chad Bortz, Chess Prime, GB Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Cobbin, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, FUTR, Gamer Games, Gavin Charlie Isaac Jackson, Jamie Nia, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Chill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lawrence, Lucas Geardis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskvark, Miyuna Arashi, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sean Dial, Second Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Yuri's Best, Zach Janschuski, Zach McKee, Blad Dive Missile, Picnic Blasted, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yukie. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.